The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 13th chapter, text number 22, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on June 27th, 1974, in Melbourne, Australia. Purusha. Purusha means the enjoyer. Purusha. And prakriti means enjoyed. For enjoyment, two things are required. One, enjoyer, and the other, enjoyer. When you eat something, the eater is the enjoyer. And the food star is enjoyed. Uh, so here, in this material world, the living entity, although by nature it is to be enjoyed, but uh, out of ignorance, the enjoyed he is claiming to be enjoyer. Just like from practical example, uh, the man and woman, the man is supposed to be the enjoyer and the woman is supposed to be the enjoyer. So, enjoyer means prakriti or uh, and enjoyer means the purusha or the male. So actually, we all living entities, we are prakriti. We are not purusha. That is stated in the seventh chapter. Aparayam itastu vidhime prakriti para jiva bhuto mahabaho Jayadam Dhargati Jaga. Uh, Krishna, after analyzing the material elements, earth, water, fire, air, mind, intelligence, ego, he concluded that these eight kinds of prakriti, energy, they are mind separated energy. But Above this energy, there is another superior energy, aparāyam. Apara means inferior. This matter is inferior. And uh, the living entity, on account of having life, it is superior energy. Because the living entity they are trying to exploit the resources of this material nature. That is going on all over the world. A country is supposed to be very rich, uh, which has become able to exploit the material resources. And this is the going on. The material nature and the spiritual nature. There are two natures. The spiritual nature, the living entities, although they are to be enjoyed, enjoyed by whom? Enjoyed by God, Krishna. Uh, Krishna says that bhukta, bhukta aham, I am the enjoyer. Uh, just like in this temple, who is the enjoyer? Krishna is the enjoyer. We are uh, helping uh, to uh, uh, Krishna's enjoyment. Krishna will eat something very nice. Our business is to prepare it nicely and offer to Krishna. He is enjoyer. Uh, he is enjoying his fruit in the company of Srimati Radha. There is very position 
his anger, and we are servants. Uh, we don't claim that we are on the equal level of Krishna. That is not our pleasure. We claim to become servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of servant of Krishna. This is our position. We don't say that, just like Mahabharata philosophers, they say that He is God. Their self-realization means when one realizes by that philosophy. So home, I am God, I am the same. Uh, that is their philosophy. And our philosophy is so home, I am the same quality. I am not the same person, but I am the same quality. We are the samples of Krishna. Very small part. Just like if you take a drop of ocean water and you taste it, you can understand what is that ocean, what is the taste of the ocean. But you, as a drop of the ocean, you are not equal to the ocean. You are in quality the same, but in quantity we are different. Therefore, in common sense, one who is smaller or weak is enjoyed by the stronger. That is the nature, you will find. In our daily uh, dealings, what we are doing? That uh, Ahastani, sahastana, ahastani, there are animals who have no hands, they have got legs. The ahastani, sahastana, both of them are animals, the goat, the cows, and there are many others. They are animals. We are also animals, are living in deity. But, those who have got hands, they eat the animals who have no hands. Ahastani sahastanam, apadani chatusvadam, and the living entities which cannot move or who have no legs to move, just like trees, plants, they have also got legs. But that leg is meant for eating. Therefore, the trees and plants are called padapa. We pour water on the leg of the tree because they eat water through their legs. But that legs cannot move. Apadani. So apadani, those living entities which cannot move, they are food for the chatuspada, those who have got four legs. That's like cows, goats and others. Nuram Bhatam Tattva, those who are weak, they are foodstuff for the strong. Nuram Bhatam Tattva Jiva Jiva Sa Jivanam. In this way, one living entity is food for the another. Then these animal killers, they may not be encouraged because they are doing nice, because one living entity is food for another, so we are eating anything. <coughs> Any moving animals we can eat, bird, beast, goat, cows, horse, ass, whatever is available. Yes, we can eat. 
But that is the natural law for the animals and uncivilized man, not for the civilized man. Because one living entity is food for another living entity, you cannot eat your father, mother, or children. Why? Because you are human being, yeah. you have got discrimination. Of course, in the human form of life, in Africa, they are cannibals. They eat their grandfather, it's a feast. They make a feast. And uh, you will be not surprised, they like to eat white man. Yes. In some parts of the Africa, they, whenever they get opportunity to kidnap a white man, they like to eat very much. <laughs> so, although the nature's law is like that, one uh, animal or one living entity is the food staff for another. But that should be, there should be discrimination. So, so far we are concerned, Krishna conscious man, we are not animals. We are perfect beings. Uh, we don't eat any living entity. Uh, that those who are lower grade uh, living entities, they are, this is the struggle. One living entity is the food for another living entity. That is lower grade life. In the higher grade life, no, they cannot kill anyone for eating purposes. Therefore in the Bible, the first commandment is, thou shalt not kill. And all these Christians, they are violating the first commandment. That is the reason. Simply engaged in killing, big, big slaughterhouse. And, and they give the example that others are eating vegetables, that is also killing. Yes, that is also killing. And that I have already explained. That because one living entity is food stuff for another living entity, that does not mean you shall eat your family members or any human being. No, that must be discriminated. But so far we are concerned, we are not killing anybody for eating purposes. We are eating Krishna Prasad, food stuff which is offered to Krishna, and then we eat. The remnants of food stuff, we eat. And Krishna says, patram puspam phalam toyam jumi bhaktya pradikshat. A leaf, a flower, fruit, a liquid, milk or water, all these things within these categories. Whatever a devotee offers me in love and devotion, I eat, Krishna says. Krishna is not hungry, neither he is dependent on your supply of foodstuff. No. But he still, uh, Krishna has become your guest. Just like you have brought Krishna here, he is very kind. Because you are devotees, you want to serve Krishna. Krishna has come in your temple in a form uh, which you can very easily serve. Krishna does not require your service, but he is so kind that he is accepting your service. You are bathing the deity, you are dressing the deity, offering flowers, garland, and whatever preparation you can make, you are offering Krishna. So Krishna has accepted 
your service in a form uh, which few can handle. That is his mercy. Uh, and if you want to serve Krishna in his gigantic form, universal form, you do not know where to catch him. That is not possible. Uh, Krishna showed his gigantic form to Arjuna, and you are terrified. Uh, please again become in your original Krishna form. Uh, even Arjuna, who is always constant companion of Krishna, friend, he was also terrified by his gigantic universal form. So, Krishna is greater than the greatest and is smaller than the smallest. That is Krishna's greatness. Uh, here in the material world, a thing which is very big, it cannot become small. But Krishna, because He is the Almighty God, He can become the greater than the greatest and the smaller than the smallest. Jajathāmāṁ prapadyante tāṁ sathīva yāma. So Krishna is bhokta. And we are uh, bhogya. Uh, it is not our position that we become Krishna and become bhogya, uh, bhokta. No. That is wrong concept. You cannot become the enjoyer. You are uh, enjoyer. But when you want to imitate Krishna and want to become enjoyer, then you are sent in this material world. This is material. Why you are in this material world? You are part and parcel of Krishna. We should remain with Krishna in the spiritual world. But why we are put into this material world? That is explained. Purusha prakriti sthohi bhumte prakriti jan guna. Because constitutionally a living entity is not enjoyer, but enjoy. But sometimes uh, everyone here, they want to imitate Krishna. Uh, everyone is trying how to become uh, a very big man, how to construct a very big high skyscraper building, how to possess three dozen motor cars, and how to possess so many servants, how to possess so many followers. Everyone is trying that. Like this, this is material world. Everyone is busy. Why busy? Uh, not for eating, sleeping. That is not problem at all. Because eating, sleep, sleeping, uh, even the birds and beasts and insects, they have no problem. They are confident. They are depending on nature. Just like we are. Because we are Surrender to Krishna, we are confident about eating and sleeping. We don't bother about that. That is not our problem. Our problem is how to serve Krishna nicely. This is our problem. The devotees are always anxious because Krishna is enjoyed and we are enjoyed so our business is to see how I am being enjoyed by Krishna, by serving Him. This is devotion. This is Krishna Kama. So long you want to enjoy this material world, you are in the material world. And as soon as you offer yourself to be enjoyed by Krishna as servant, according to His order, you saw, then immediately you are in the spiritual world. So you can become 
in the material world or spiritual world as you desire. As you desire. If you want to remain in the spiritual world, this, this temple is the spiritual world. We are not living in Melbourne. This temple is not Melbourne. It is Vaikuntha. It is Vrindavan. So if you stick to this temple service, Krishna service, then you are not in this material world. And as soon as you want to enjoy this material world, immediately you are in material world. This is your position. So what is the business of this material world? Now falsely we are trying to enjoy. The false enjoy. Everyone is trying to be enjoyed. Krishna has given little freedom. All right. You want to enjoy, enjoy it. But you have to be in this material world. And uh, in the material world, as soon as you come to the material world, immediately you become contaminated by the modes of material nature. Material nature has three modes or three qualities. <coughs> Good quality, passion quality, and ignorance quality. Goodness, passion, and ignorance. So material world means you associate with the material three qualities, goodness, passion, or ignorance. And according to that, as you associate, you get a certain type of body. Krishna, orders prakriti, the material nature, that he wants to enjoy in this way, you give him a suitable body like that. If he wants to enjoy by becoming a tiger, immediately I shall jump over an animal because nuram mahatam tatra the weak is the food for the strong. So uh, sometimes we think that we shall be strong like tiger or lion. Krishna is sitting within you. He says, all right, you become a tiger. He says that to become a tiger is my success life, a very strong body. We are exercising. Uh, very strong, to become very strong, stout. So Krishna will give you whatever you want. Uh, but in this material world, in the spiritual world, you cannot become a competitor of Krishna. That is not possible. In this material world, you can become a false competitor of Krishna. Your position is false. Because you are not this body, but he wanted a body like that to enjoy. Just like a pig is given a body, he wanted to enjoy a stool. Uh, as a human being, possessing a human body, nobody can eat stool. But if one gets a suitable body just like pig, you can very nicely eat stool. So why there are different types of bodies? Because he wanted a particular type of enjoyment under the influence of material nature. As already explained, there are three material nature qualities. Satagon, Rajagon, Tamak. Now we mix them. Three into three, it becomes nine. Nine multiplied by nine, it becomes eighty-one. Therefore, there are eight million four hundred thousand species of life, according to the material quality. That is explained here. Purusha prakriti stohi bhumte prakriti jan guna. Prakriti jan guna to possess different types of body means to satisfy our different kinds of 
desires under the influence of the modes of materiality. Full, full freedom. Therefore, when one is advanced in consciousness, he doesn't want to enjoy anything of this material world. Anyway, he doesn't desire either to become the king or Lord Brahma or the stool or, I mean to say, the worms of the stool. These are the different varieties. Jalayana Valakhani, Sthavra, Lakhavinsati. According to the desire, we get body in the water. 900,000 forms. Similarly, in the botanical garden, uh, they, they are giving sign board, this is this, this is this. But there are two million types of trees and plants. How many they know? Two million. If you search out the whole botanical garden, hardly you will find two thousand, three thousand species. Uh, or even find ten thousand. Still, what it is? There are two millions. This is knowledge. So, if we read the Vedic literature and you get full knowledge, and the essence of Vedic literature is Srimad Bhagavad. And the Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary study of Srimad Bhagavad. A, B, C, D. The Bhagavad Gita is the ABCD of knowledge. This is entrance examination, matriculation examination, school leaving examination. And Srimad Bhagavad is graduate. When you become graduate in spiritual knowledge, then you can understand Srimad Bhagavad. And when you have passed your uh, bachelor degree, uh, when you are postgraduate, that study is Sri Chaitanya Chaita Amrita. So we have got three different status of uh, reading capacity. Uh, we have got already twenty book. So don't waste your time. Try to understand what is Krishna and what is spiritual life by reading this book. Everything is explained there. Don't associate with this material nature. If you associate with this material nature, then what will be the result? Karanam gunasangasya sadasad joni janmasu. Joni means the source of birth. Just like we take our birth, the source is the mother. From the mother's womb we come out. That is called Joni, the source. Uh, so there are mothers, uh, uh, human being mother, cat mother, dog mother, this mother, so many mothers. Without mother there is no uh, birth. And without father also there is no birth. Therefore it is said, the janame janame sabe pitamata pa. In every birth, he gets a father and mother. Because without father and mother, there is no question of birth. So here also see, sadasat jani janmas. Why one is being born through the mother of a cat or the, through the mother of dog? or a human being, or a king, or a demigod, the mother, through mother you have to come out. That's called Joni. But why these different mothers? Taranam guna as he has infected the eighty-one qualities, colorful qualities of this material nature, the nature will give you a suitable body through the uh, particular mother. So where is the science? Uh, they have the botanical garden, but do they know what is the science? 
Why there is tree and why there is ant, why there is bird, why there is man? They have no knowledge. This material, school, college, university, simply producing any ordinary animal life. Uh, uh, actual knowledge is here in the Bhagavad Gita. These are the why one is forced to accept a certain type of body. Uh, because after death I will have to accept a certain type of body that is natural. Tatha the hantra prapti as I am getting the hantra one body after another, baby's body, then another body, child's body, then another body, boy's body. You may say it is growing, growing or not growing, it is another body. Try to understand this. This child is playing. Now he will get another body. When he will be called boy, he will get another body. When he will be called you, he will get another body. And he will be called old man. So why not another body? This is called transmigration of the soul. Very simple thing. So we are getting different types of bodies according to the association with the material nature. If you don't associate with this material nature, then you don't get all these material bodies. So how we can get out of this material nature? That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Why? Mancha Bhavicharini Bhakti Yogi Najasivati Saguna Samati Tavitan Brahma Bhuyaka. One who is constantly engaged in Krishna's service. He is not associating with this material nature. He is associating directly with Krishna, the Supreme Spirit. So if you keep yourself constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness, then you are not in this material world. Uh, there is no more fear of what kind of body you get next. You will get next body, go back to home, back to God. This is one. Uh, if you go back to home, back to God, in the same style of body as Krishna has got, spiritual body, Ishara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigra. Then Lava or Bhav. That is stated in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, that Takta de Hang Punarajan Mahanaiti, Mahameti Kontiya. The devotees were constantly, constantly thinking of Krishna, trying to understand Krishna, and engaged in Krishna's service. Such personality, after giving up this body, we have to give up this body. Everyone, the cat, dogs, they will also give up body, we shall also give up body. But the difference is, a devotee after giving up this body, he does not get any more material body. So, our request is, those who have come to Krishna consciousness, don't fall down again in the material quality. Uh, that will not help you. Remain strictly adherent to the spiritual activities and your life will be successful. Thank you very much. Yeah.